you're just another beggar showing another beggar that here is where I found bread. Sometimes when we share the gospel, that's the item we don't want to put in the list. There's hell, that you're a sinner, but you cannot share the gospel without that. Evangelism is a community project. We don't need to do this on at all. They've been hurt, judged, condemned all their life. I propose that we approach them with the compassion, the love of Christ, not to compromise the truth of the gospel. Welcome to Adulting with Joyce Spring. Watch a full video of this episode on my channel www.youtube.com slash joyspringtv and if you want to level up your adulting game check out joyspring.com slash collections for my digital products and courses now that we've shared the gospel now what what do we do after you know uh, one of the blessings that we had uh, during the pandemic is we started off with just a simple christmas celebration and then uh, my wife actually challenged me can you share a christmas devotion and uh, so I did. I mustered up the, the Holy Spirit courage. And I shared the, I know, the, the Christmas story. And you know what? You, you'll be amazed. If you obey in faith, God's uh, leading and broadening. Um, sila na mismo. Yung magtatanong, can we do this again? So, ang nangyari from that point on, hindi, hindi, lang, na, hindi, lang, na, uh, hindi lang kami nag-stop sa Christmas. We actually made it a point to have a, a meal together every Sunday evening uh, and then to just have a short devotion uh, into the new year and into the months after that. So, parang ano lang, parang uh, I, was, I was formerly in the sales industry. In the sales industry, you have a three-day marker, seven-day marker, two weeks, one month. That's when you follow through on your prospect or something like that. No? So, eh, kung yung mga ahente, sobrang diligent to follow through, to follow up. Oh, kamusta na po? Napag-isipan niyo na po ba yung, ano, yung, yung in-offer ko sa inyo? What more time, mga Christiano? Pag, pag in-offer natin yung greatest news, yung gospel, pero wala tayong follow-through. <laughs> Sayang, right? So, I guess uh, this would be a springboard na when, when you have that opportunity to share the gospel in your Christmas gathering, ituloy niyo na hanggang New Year. New Year's Eve, di ba? New Year's Day. And then coming into the New Year, habang... Uh, you know, people in the new year are so wired for change. Right? They want new resolutions. Sakyan mo na yun. Right? Oh, let's do a Bible study on ganyan. Right? So try to continue it uh, with the opportunity that God gives you. And I tell you, if you step out in faith, if you do this for God, He will be the one to open doors and He will be the one to soften hearts. Your loved one uh, receives Christ and they would respond uh, connect them to a Bible-believing gospel uh, preaching church. Um, let them know that once they, for example, receive Christ, that uh, the journey starts and therefore they need to walk with other believers and saints. So they need to be discipled. Pray that uh, kung kailangan niya, kung medyo niya siya or uh, to go there, mas maganda, samahan mo muna siya. You know? So... And of course, if you feel awkward, yeah, just uh, let the person know that it's just it's okay. You know, uh, I think it will also be helpful if you're going to provide a Bible to the person. Though, meron naman sa app, you know, pero mas maganda kasi na we we also start telling the person that they can uh, start reading. For example, uh, what I would would usually uh, recommend is that they can start reading in the Book of John. You know, so like, for example, my Bible translation is ESV. So in chapter one, there are five subheadings. So you can just start reading one subheading in a day. And if you have questions, then you can, for example, ask me or ask your ate or who's already a believer or kumero ng pastor na nagkoconnect sa kanya then you Kasi, uh, yeah, I would, I would agree. This is sinasabi ni, ni, uh, ni, ni Mike na mas maganda na when the person is already responsive, Follow through. Follow through. And of course, that also connects to what Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20 says, right? That when Christ said that we go and make all disciples, it and Kosunodon is that we baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we teach them, not just some, but everything. You know? So and that demands a whole life of walking with the Lord. So be persi- if you're persistent with evangelism, all the more you need to be persistent in discipling. You know? So yeah. So yeah, so when they say yes, so definitely disciple them. If they say no, then pray. <laughs> pray more. 
Kunin mo na sila, Lord. Nee, 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 nee. Yan ko yung perfect. No, no. Break with them. Uh, don't cut the relationship. You know, you're still friends. Uh, like you, especially family, diba? So, you still build relationship. Uh, so, yeah, Just keep praying that God will open the door. Uh, ang siguro recommendation ka lang if you're the one who shared it and, and kaya mong i-follow up, be the one to disciple that person. Kasi nandun ka na eh. Bring that person to your church uh, and help that person grow in Christ's likeness. And yun na pinaka-gola, the reason why we share the gospel for them to know Christ and for them to become more like Christ. Yeah, I agree with what they shared. The importance talaga ng following up. Kasi imagine nyo na lang, diba? yung shinara nyo, baby siya. So diba pag baby, di nyo naman iwanan lang dyan para feed itself, right? Right? You won't uh, leave your baby alone. Yes. Diba? You have to nurse, nurture, um, help. Example, kami, may puppy ka, babe. Sige, puppy na lang. Wala kang baby. <laughs> puppy! Pero, like, diba? Tutulungan. You're gonna teach, as in, help the the dog or puppy or your baby. You'll feed them. You'll take care of them. So, in the same way, but when you share the gospel, you don't just leave the person and just, kasi daw pwedeng baka ma-snatch. Ay, alam niyo yun, parang makain na naman siya ng mundo or something. Pero, at the same time, I think it's our role then to connect them to the church or even yun nga tama disciple them so just to share I can remember before my sister would invite me to CCF ni, ni pelete eh. actually ni siya force then I realize you don't have to force the person but always be inviting she connected me before to J-Zone I remember in ano pa in St. Francis and in Taft but I realized na um, slowly parang you can't force the person but eventually when that person does desire to grow and if they are want, they want to they all the more give them opportunities to be connected and um, also sharing your your your, your quiet times, diba? or um, really going through the Bible within them. So, so I would like to ask Pastor Mike first, how can we do practically uh, do follow-ups? If you want to be extra intentional, uh, you write down on your notes or on your reminder uh, the person that you had a conversation with. Ako sometimes, because uh, I get messages all the time. I'm like a 24-7 call center. You know, Pastor, can you pray for me? Can you help me? Ganyan. So I often take, um, you know, in the messenger uh, or in mga chat uh, platforms, I, I I have a tendency to chat with them. So it's just like, I know where, where they're coming from, when was our last conversation, what was it about. No, But sometimes, uh, or I think half of the time, uh, I'm, you know, counseling or approaching someone face-to-face. And when that happens, I make it a point to note it down, at least just the gist of what we talked about. Para lang I can remember because I'm not the most uh, me- memory. Uh, me- uh, I I I tend to forget a lot of things, so I I note it down just to be extra intentional, and uh, I put a reminder. Okay, catch up with ganito. It's in my calendar. You can even see it. Their names are there. I have a set one on one with this person, with that person next week. Ganyan. I really make it a point to uh, to set that meeting. Second to Pastor Franco, uh, you, I do remember uh, that the gospel is also for the believers. And at times, we believers tend to um, get so bored with the gospel. How can we be gospel fluent with brothers and sisters as well who, who, are, who we can see is deeming, getting back, uh, not playing, uh, their part on the gospel. When we say that the gospel is also for believers, it means uh, the gospel is not just a past event, it's a present event, and it will continue to hold you until the future. And how would it continue to uh, strengthen your grip and your heart for Christ? Uh, the gospel uh, allows us to, to see over and over again how vile, wretched, and how much we are in need of Christ. So the way for us to do that is not to rely on our feelings, but to the Word. Psalm 19.7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Now, the gospel is explicit definitely in the Word of God. So find yourself to to relish in that truth and in that power. Because when it does... It truly and it all, strengthens, rebukes, and then it all, uh, brings you back to your need for Christ. And when that happens, uh, th- there is also a means of grace, the God, that, that he uses so that we can go back to the gospel. And that's the continuing ethic of repent, uh, confession and repentance. No? Uh, 1 John chapter 1 no, tells you that if you're in the light, then you're going to see 
you read more and more about you know the the the, the very need to confess, right? And for you to repent so that so that the righteousness of Christ will be fresh and that you'll see that the only righteousness that you need is really from him, you know? So, uh, and of course, confession and repentance is not something that is automatic to Christians. So we need the Holy Spirit to, uh, to, 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 to give us that uh, uh, pressing. So we need to ask, you know, continue ethic of repentance, confession, but at the same time, faith to believe again to what Christ has already done and what 1 John chapter 2, verse 2 says, that Christ uh, is the propitiation of our sins once and for all. No? So that you can be confident that your right standing with God is not based on your performance, but based on the performance of Christ. So my question, and this is something that I've just dealt with over the past few years of being a Christian, being a born again believer, is how do you be bold in sharing the gospel? How do you balance that with being gentle and not over forcing or overstepping um, and sharing it? Because, you know, oftentimes I get that urge from the Holy Spirit to stand up on a plane and just start preaching the gospel. But then I'm like, what people are going to, you know, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's my question. Definitely when you're guided by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you the right words to say to that person. Um, our, I think there are tendencies, especially when you're a new believer, right? I remember when I was still a young Christian. Sometimes I just, when I do random evangelism, I'm, I'm rough, you have to repent, you know, this is the right belief, your belief is wrong. So we, we get a little bit, uh, we, we debate with these people, right? But as you grow older, the grace of God works mightily in your heart and you know the right words to say because, of, again, of the, oh, because of the Holy Spirit. So, of course, prayer is very important um, and the proper understanding of the grace of God in your life, how He has changed you. Because just like in the scripture, that's what they did. When you, th when you look at the life of the Apostle Paul, uh, yes, he was straight to the point, but he was very gracious to them as well. It's very loving to them. And uh, in fact, even Jesus Christ, that's what he wanted us to do to other people, to show love, his love to others, um, to show his grace to other people. And then the message will be more relatable to them uh, when you do that. So that one, uh, when, you, when you ask the Holy Spirit to empower you, you'll have the right words to say. And ask God also to give you the love for these people. Uh, when, before Every time I preach or before I preach uh, or, or even share the gospel, I would ask God to give me the love for other people. Because if I love them, I will be gentle. I will be gracious. I will not force the situation. I will still, I will share the truth. Of course, I will definitely share the truth. Uh, I will tell them that, yeah, hell is real. Because I think sometimes when we share the gospel, that's the item we don't want to put in the list. Like there's hell, that you're a sinner. You're, but you cannot share the gospel without that, right? So that's really part of that. But it's more of when I share, I share about my life. Like I realize that I'm just broken, I don't have a purpose because of my sin. I'm duped. I'm wretched, just like what Franco was sharing. And it's in the scripture. And that's what they share. They're wretched. They're empty. I think that changes the tone when you talk about yourself. Rather than telling them, you're the sinner. You're going to hell. Look at you. So that's, that's how they get offended, right? Uh, so talk about yourself first. Then eventually, you just pray and that the Holy Spirit will speak to that person. So yeah. May, may I add, Pastor Marty? So I think first, you have to remember the intention of gospel sharing. What is the intention? It is not to prove other people wrong or to say that their belief system, their foundational core is wrong. It is to point people to Christ and to show them the grace of God in your life, right? So if you have your intention correct, then it will be easier for you to be gentle because you're not constantly trying to prove yourself right or prove the other person wrong. You're not trying to win a debate here. You're trying to win a soul for Christ. Not that that's your work, but that is the work that you're doing, that God is calling you to do. The second is your disposition. You're just another beggar showing another beggar that here is where I found bread. Here is the bread of life. Here is where I experience grace and love and transformation. Here is life eternal where 
I won't have to pay for my sins because Christ did it on the cross. So that intention and disposition, I think, changes everything. You know, and I think it's also constantly reminding yourself of the gospel and 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 doing studying the word really because if we don't study the word then anything anecdotal cannot be as we've been talking about here earlier cannot be tied back to the word so it's good to have at least your basic apologetics ready if in case there are any questions it's also good to remind ourselves that evangelism is a community project we don't need to do this on at all so that's why you need to to find a little church there and you could be a member where you can grow uh paul wrote to the efficiency said in chapter six pray for me that i will have boldness that as i open my mouth the mystery of the gospel would be known now did you catch that paul was asking the church for them to pray for him that you will have boldness Wow, this is Apostle Paul already. But he understood the power of what a church community looks like if they're going to love arms together and say, we're on this together. You don't need to do this on your own, uh, brother. Okay, so uh, there are times that you will let it talk. Take the guy, share the gospel. That's okay. Then share that to someone, okay, in, in your group and in your church and ask them to pray for you. Or can you come with me? You know, be my prayer partner, or can you share the gospel with this person? So so you see that there's a collaborative work that you don't need to do this on your own. You have the other brothers and sisters who can walk with you, can pray with you, can encourage you. And for sure, they're also going to say, oh, but the Lord has strengthened me. And from there, you can also find encouragement. So yeah, do do acknowledge. The beauty of the community that you're in. So, paano daw po kung iniisip ng mga tao na hindi totoo ang relationship na binubuo uh, ko sa kanila dahil may mas malalim akong motibo na i-convert sila? Eh, meron naman talaga. Don't feel bad na parang because you alter your mood. I, they will feel that, but it's okay. It's okay for them to feel that because yun, it doesn't change the fact that you're still gonna share the gospel to them. Because it's still the gospel that's really the truth uh, that really is the only message that will lead them to salvation, not, nothing else, right? So just, you know, go ahead and, uh, and share that. Because that's our, in the Filipino context, I think that's the one of the reasons why we're afraid in. Because people think we're trying to convert them, trying to convert them. Another thing pala, the reason why it's it, one thing that can motivate you, because part of the gospel is not just you're a sinner, that somebody, uh, Jesus Christ saved you. The resurrection, that in itself, when they saw the resurrection, that, of course, the Holy Spirit, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, but the resurrection was the one that pushed them. Huy, mag-share ka na. In fact, when I, whenever I share the gospel, I would I always go back to the resurrection, especially in today's age. Ha? Because before, we're used to sharing the gospel. Okay, so we're, you know, we're all wretched and God. And that's good. Those are good things. But there are many young people right now that they question still that, well, that's just your belief. Why will I believe in that? And I always go back to the resurrection because I'll tell them nobody else has ever done that. That's the reason why we believe in the gospel. That's the reason why we share it. So that's it's just like in a cure of cancer, entering the only solution to death. Now, if you want to have eternal life, this is the only solution. The only one who can pay the penalty of sin. The only one who can pay, our, our, who can transform our lives is Jesus Christ. So it's okay to have to make for them to feel that we have ulterior motives. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with them uh, knowing that you have that motive. Again, I, I, I guess let's not call it ulterior because it is a motive, right? <laughs> and uh, for them to know that, actually, you can actually tell them, you know, I really love you. I care for you. And that's why I want to share this truth with you. So anytime that you need prayer, I'm here for you. I, that's the most authentic, genuine thing that you can ever do for another person. How do you share the gospel in a way that won't affect or offend those in the LGBT community? No, ito, uh, in the ministry of CCF, because we have a, a, a strong LGBT uh, or former LGBT community. 
the previous one who was leading and alam kilala ni Mike Dahl, si Paul Aquino. So the previous one who was leading the ministry, and I think even the current one is leading the ministry right now. Former LGBT sila. Alam mo yung nakapag-transform. Sorry, of course the gospel. Uh, of course Jesus Christ, right? But it's because they understood and they received the gospel of Jesus. Yun talaga. The reason why they are offended because we rebuke them right away na, oh, you're going to hell. Tapos, or para, oh, masama yung ginagawa mo. Oh, you have a relationship with the same sex. Sex, ah, masunog ka. Something like that. Those things offend them. But the, in, nang galing sa kanila pa, as a former head no ministry, sabi niya, just share to them the gospel. Because if I'm, they understood it, they received the grace of God, or God, you know, worked mightily in their hearts, and their lives are transformed, magbabago sila. They're not gonna be offended. So, yeah. And uh, I think, for the longest time, uh, we had it backwards. Kasi pag inisip natin, ay, homosexual, kailangan maging heterosexual to. That's not the answer. The answer is the gospel. So for any homosexual or for any sinner for that matter, the gospel is always the answer. So rather than trying to change their external, kung paano sila manamit, kung paano sila magbehave, you focus on the heart. Because that sinful, hardened, wretched heart needs to be recreated, regenerated. So you focus on the heart first, di ba? You establish that all of us are sinners. You, you have your sin, I have mine. You're not any worse than I am. All of us fall short of the glory of God. And then once you establish that core of the gospel in their lives, saka na, follow na lang yung iba. All of us, we have struggles, issues. Some people nowadays, same-sex attraction, homosexual lifestyle. All of those are from a root cause of them wanting to be fulfilled, them wanting to, be, to belong, to be accepted, and they're just going about it in a sinful manner. So point them to the gospel. I've been uh, honored and privileged to walk alongside such individuals. They've shared their struggles with me. I've walked with them. And uh, by God's grace, um, God took out that homophobia from me. Just granted me a heart of compassion for them. Honestly, they've been hurt, judged, condemned all their lives. And here comes Christians, again, plunging that same wound with that spear and uh, they're, 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 they're so hurt already. So um, I propose that we approach them with the compassion, the love of Christ, but again, not to compromise the truth of the gospel. Everybody needs the gospel. Just to add, actually, um, just to share then, we, we have a sibling, actually, I have a sibling that's part of the LGBT community. And Ting and I have shared the gospel. I think my sister is here. We shared the gospel and even before the invite pass a living free ministry and all, um, healthy yung discussion, but I realized talaga more than uh, it's important to speak the truth in love. But you know, right now it's still a constant journey of praying, praying talaga for our sibling to also really surrender yung life niya kay Christ. And I know we can't change our sibling, our sister, um, but I really believe in God's time the seed has been planted and my relationship show with God. Pero yun nga eh, parang siguro. God has also worked in our hearts to really trust and wait on His timing, on how He will be the one to work in our sister's life. Then. So it's a constant journey of really walking with them and loving them as Christ would. Um, but yun nga, not compromising the truth then. Um, and really prayer. Yun nga, I need to do it. Yun, I, don't, I remember that verse. Um, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. And praying that si God mismo yung mag, um, free, the, free them from bondage, that bondage. But at the end of the day, like uh, it's us entrusting our family members or your friends the to the Lord and also really showing them Christ likeness. And it, it's not us debating about this or that. Of course, it's a healthy discussion. Because they open up when they can really trust you. So we're really building trust then and um constant communication, love, and being present in their lives. Because we can only do of course we can influence them, but if you're not present in their lives, the boat, what's the point? So, can I just say I have a best friend also who's part of the community, and I remember my best friend was telling me, uh, "Babe, but what if she calls me, babe? Babe, but what if I never become straight? Will you still love me?" And they have these questions, these longings, and these fears that they will be rejected. And also, you have to be careful because I think the 
tricky part now with the LGBTQ community is their sexual identity has become their personal identity. And so it's no longer a question of, okay, you're part of this community, ganyan, ganyan. You have to address that. Eh. Where is your identity? Where does your identity lie? So we, that's what we discuss. That's what we offer them. Instead of saying, malito, mali yung ginagawa, mali yung ganyan. Of course, we say the truth in love, right? But we go into the root of the the issue, which is your identity. What do you identify yourself as? Are you just a person? I'm just saying just with quote quotation marks. Just a person that's part of that community? Or are you something more? So how will you be able to share to a community who believes something that is you know, radically different? Or like let's say somebody who is trying to explore different religions and who are trying, who has, or like let's say you're part of a certain community or like let's say isa ka dito sa course na ito that who are dominated by by different radical beliefs na let's say parang ikaw lang isa dun yung, yung Christian dun and yung buong class mo is lahat puro ano na puro mga let's say mga mga agnostic and mga you know stuff like that yung BF talaga sa UB at Ineo I think dun po mapasok yung persistence in prayer and persistence of believing that God is powerful to save even if they have different views sa'yo. Um, so, in God's providence, God has placed you there, not by accident. So, start building relationships. And from there, as God gives you opportunities to, to build trust, then that's an opportunity then for you to start praying now, okay, Lord, what will be the next step? Or maybe uh, you'll notice something that it is actually part of the natural realm, but it's, it's an opportunity for you to connect it to spirituality. Okay? So, yeah, and I, I, I understand what you're saying. So in, in a context where, for example, naka, nasa block lang kayo, magkakasama kayo all the time, no? Pero kasama mo silang mag-lunch, kasama mo silang mag-break, you know? And you will have these conversations. And you don't need to hide that you're a Christian. You, you, you can just be honest that these are the things that are happening to me. Oh, those are the things that are, that are happening to you. Uh, then, pa- para makita rin nila na there's also something different sa iyo. So hindi lang sila different. You go then, that's your distinct. And when an opportunity comes for you to connect uh, any gospel conversation or just to inject your need nila for Christ, then grab it. No? And that comes in terms of you building relationships sa kanila. Okay? Now, if you have this if you have the strength to preach in front of them, why not? No, seriously, because others would do that. You know, open preaching uh, of of the gospel. Now, of course, definitely you will be mocked you know, from from there. But then, if they're gonna see you that even if you're doing that, you're the guy na nilang puntahan. You're the guy, you no, know, that that can can they can really count on, you no. Know? So, and yun yung yun yung, yung pinapagit natin kanina. Does your life demand a gospel explanation? So, and if they start to see that and you build relationships, kahit na magkaiba kayo ng, ano to, ng views, but definitely you have similarities that you can connect uh, spiritual matters and that's where the gospel can hopefully be evident in your conversations or friendships. Yeah. I think uh, all truth is God's truth. And in uh, mga belief system, mga religion, there's some semblance of truth. May mga partial truths yan. And for you to connect those truths to a higher truth, God's truth, I think that takes a lot of work and um, that takes a lot of questions. So I, I love uh, using questions to understand where a person is coming from. So why do you believe what, what you believe? What's the basis? And then when they answer, so how did that come about? What does that look like? Where did it come from? So you ask questions. Kaya, uh, most Christians, kasi, this is where we fall short. We have this niche that we're in a Christian community and we just remain there. Well, we don't go out. 
we don't engage the culture all around us. Don't be intimidated uh, when someone woke comes to you or agnostic or from another religion. Don't be intimidated. That's the last thing that you need to be. Instead, be curious. Ask questions. Now, why do you believe that? I want to know. I genuinely want to know. And then that's how then you can formulate, okay, how, what partial or semblance of truth is in this that I can relate somehow to Christianity or to the gospel? Because if you never ask those questions, you never will know how to connect it to your faith. No, um, in, in today's uh, world right now, I think I, I can understand, totally understand what you're saying. Because they know a lot. Uh, these people know a lot. They said that they've tried Christianity. They've heard about, maybe not really understood what Christianity is or who Jesus really is. But uh, not just here, in the U.S., in different countries, like, right? So they, they just keep on trying religion, whatever fits for them. Um, agree with what they said. I uh, just want to add to help you and all of us that. I say that's the battle we're facing right now. Eh? And of course, our goal is to continually preach the gospel, to continue to disciple people, to continue to spread and build God's kingdom here on earth. Uh, so one is, Iko personally, yung First Peter chapter 3, always be prepared to give an answer to the hope that you have. Right? So always be prepared. That's why you keep studying the Word of God. A part of being prepared is your life. Because uh, yes, you share the gospel. Keep on doing that. Share the good news. Uh, talk about Jesus. If they ask you a question, answer. Uh, if you don't know, don't say "Magkapag invento," right? You you say that I'm gonna get back to you. I don't know the answer yet to that. So and then you get back to them. Pero dapat they should see in your life the love of Christ. I'm going back to Acts, the book of Acts that transformed the Roman Empire. That's why they were attracted to the gospel. I mean, yes, they were preaching, but most of them were not. Because what God used was the love of the community. And what I want to share for all of us then, I know some of us come from different churches. Satan is trying to break the church. There are a lot of bashing online. And I, I personally heard with that. It's not biblical. I know we have different, you know, really, be, uh, some, uh, th- what, what do you call that, preferences, but it shouldn't break the church because that's one of the reasons why they don't like to go to church. That's one of the, I know the gospel will transform them. I, I Given the gospel will transform them. But it's also biblical to say we have to be one because that's the prayer of Jesus. It hurts the body of Christ. That's what they say. I, I don't want to go to church. They don't want to go to church online, no? So, tayo, but we do whatever we can, our best. Online is not the best way to call each other out. There's a better way to do that, to, to communicate, right? Because they're feasting on it. Eh. And the reason why I can share this is because I minister to these people. I minister to the people that I hear their concerns. I know people will tell me, hey, the gospel is powerful. I know the gospel is powerful. And I'm not saying, I'm not discounting the fact that the gospel can change hearts of people. But it's still biblical to say that Jesus prayed for this. We need to be one. So first, you prepare yourself. Second is you continue showing that love to others. And third, tayo as a body of Christ, na tayo mag Dapat we really be united because the world will know that we are His disciples when we love one another. Michelle, there's a practical tip because... I'll never forget, and you guys are in college, right? Or nice one. Yeah, so I'll never forget my blockmate first year of college. Because I was college in college, I was connected to the group. Eh. Pero, um, this blockmate of mine, uh, I'll never forget because she would always ask me, Michelle, how can I pray for you? Like she would message me. Um, she was one of the Christians in my block. And I'll never forget that because those were the moments that I was really stressed or struggling. But there was that one friend or one blockmate that just message me and ask me how I can pray for you. So um, don't discredit that because feel ko, um, that's one way you can break the ice. And I don't, it might seem awkward or uh, but it's not threatening. Eh? Like ask your, your blockmate, your friend, your org mate, how can I pray for you? And that's something that could start a conversation of them opening up about something. And it eventually can bridge, you know, I can bridge Jesus or really pray for them. It means like I said, we ask, how can I pray for you? But we don't really, but so really pray for them. And follow up then. So that's one thing that helped me during college. And I'll never, I'll never forget. Screenshot. I screenshotted that message because she was so consistent. 
it wasn't just once. Like she would really always ask me, how can I pray for you? And I really sensed her love for me. And um, yun nga, people don't care naman eh how much you know about something, but they'll, they'll care but until they know how much they care about. So yeah. uh, from the POV of a D group leader or discipler, how can I encourage my disciples or potential leaders to share the gospel without sounding like I am forcing them to do so. So anybody that yeah. can ask. I think uh, one of the ways that uh, we've done it in our D group is uh, we just inspire or uh, parang uh, lead by example. So when we're in the group chat, we just share the gospel. Oh, I shared the gospel in my company today. Ganyan. Or I shared the gospel to my uh, relative today. That's my picture from my selfie as proof. So in in that way, everyone is you know uh, inspired, rejoicing, and galvanized. Also, they're they're also likewise. Oh nga, no, parang pwede ko rin to. So lead by example. Ikaw na po, if you're the D group uh, leader, you do it first. <laughs> do take a selfie whenever you have the opportunity to share the gospel with someone, and then share it to them. Na parang wow, praise God, ito yung nangyari. And then that will hopefully inspire them also to do the same. As a D group leader, I think it's also imperative for you guys to rehearse the gospel together. Uh, it's not bad uh, for you to uh, go back if need to attend the biblical evangelism seminar, then that would be great. Uh, watch together or uh, play a Discord, then watch it together. Discord, I haven't tried that. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, nah, but yeah, it's, yeah, uh, it's a Zoom lang, it's a Zoom. So Google Meet, yeah, but yeah. But yeah, because uh, because means that we know that one is attend lang, for example, the evangelism seminar. That's that's okay. But I think it's good to be refreshed. No, so find opportunities. I think I uh, I think yes, he is. It's a uh, providing or oh, promoting pa bro, ah. Right. Uh, hey, man. Say God, Father, Mama. Yeah. Right. 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 Yes, he is. It's right. providing resources. So if you're going to have uh, an email of maglatin ka doon, yeah, definitely madami dong ano to, uh, uh, ways on how you can ano to, fight. But uh, I would I would love for you also to rehearse, like for example, just read together the book of Romans. You know, because the book of Romans gives you a picture of what the gospel is, but at the same time, you parang a merong melodic line, for example, lang the the book of Romans. It's like uh, the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ, and at the same time, obedience of faith. So just reading together the word, uh, just like what Mike said, it it bolsters yung yung heart niya. Though wow, it yung yung word ni God has the power to save people, right? So that from there, even as you're going to share the testimony, your your testimony will be wrapped and shaped by the word, no? So what kayong wag mangya, wag 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 sabi kita. Ay di tapos na natin to nag evangelism training na tayo last year. Nobody's going to arrive, you know, of uh, fully understanding what the gospel is. So, uh, I know, uh, continue to be equipped, continue to be trained, and pray to get. That's it for this episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. If you liked this podcast, please don't forget to use the hashtag Adulting with Joy Spring and also check out www.joyspring.com for the show notes and tag me on social media with you know it at Joy Spring. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Paalam!